Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between uh, preserving an object so it's inoperable versus continuing to use an artifact and uh, what the pros and cons are of that. Before I go any further, it's worth pointing out that uh, different museums have vastly different approaches to this, and the community is pretty widely divided between which one is best for preservation of the object. Here at Battleship New Jersey, we do some of each. For example, our contract with the Navy prevents us from being able to run certain equipment, such as the ship's engines or galley equipment. Meanwhile, we have artifacts such as this 40 millimeter gun, which is original to Battleship New Jersey, and one of the ship's boats, which we do preserve in running condition. So you can see that even at a single institution, sometimes there isn't a solid set answer to things. The major question is what will allow an object to last the longest? That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to defeat time so that artifacts like this battleship, this 40 millimeter gun, or some of these vehicles that we got to visit last weekend are uh, preserved as long as possible so that people continue to see them, experience them, and learn what life was like when they were used. As museums, we hold these artifacts in the public trust, and it is our responsibility to preserve them for as long as possible, indefinitely. But while there's been a lot written about what is uh, the best way to preserve things indefinitely, there isn't a, a wide ranging consensus on it. So when we visited Texas, we drove about an hour north of Houston and visited the Museum of the American GI. That museum displays, interprets, and occasionally uses about a dozen historic vehicles uh, some of them dating back as far as World War I, uh, but primarily in the World War II time frame. One of the cool things about what that museum does is on specific reenactor weekends, they take a lot of these vehicles out and they run them around their property and uh, let people see how they operate. Let's look at the uh, upside and the downside of what they do. Uh, and again, there, there's no right or wrong answers. There are upsides and downsides to everything. Many vehicle museums, such as tanks and aircraft, uh, have managed to restore their vehicles to working conditions. Oftentimes, this is more expensive than just preserving something as a static display. Um, these museums refer to those sorts of static displays as quote unquote gate guards. So as you can imagine, it is significantly cheaper to seal up an object, not restore the inside, and just keep the outside of it painted and working fine. And how many times have you driven past a VFW hall or a uh, military base or aviation museum and they've got one of these quote unquote gate guards sitting on display at the front gate on a big pedestal or on a concrete block? We're all familiar with this type of uh, way of preserving vehicles. What many museums, like the Museum of the American GI, attempt to do is keep their vehicles in running condition, which requires them to work on these vehicles and continue to uh, improve them over time. This is a great way to learn about the artifact, and I'm sure it colors how they interpret those objects to guests having been able to drive it, having done maintenance on the engine, knowing what breaks frequently and what works very well. Uh, it, it is a whole nother step of doing history above reading the books or studying the photographs. The downside to this is often you end up losing original parts of the vehicle. As you are operating the thing, stuff stops working. Vehicles are only designed to operate for a certain number of hours and then you've got to change out parts. So uh, these original World War II parts are being swapped out for more modern parts, which is fine when you're able to do like material in like fashion. Taking out a tank's spark plugs and replacing it with new spark plugs, you have lost nothing. Uh, taking out the original seat 
and replacing it with a new seat that's that's the same uh, material and condition, even if it is a reproduction as opposed to original, is fine. You still get the idea of what this is like. You still get a really well-preserved vehicle. Where really excessive consumption of the artifact comes in are things like uh, when something goes catastrophically wrong and the vehicle is damaged or destroyed in some way. For a tank, this might be trying to drive it through a ditch that it can't make it through and it gets stuck. Uh, for an aircraft, that could be more severe. Uh, we, we've all heard stories about aircraft at air shows crashing into each other or suffering issues and uh, crashing. And at that point, the artifact is almost always a total loss. So it was not saved in perpetuity. So really the big question here is, is that risk of losing some of these objects worth um, all of the knowledge that you gain by continuing to operate them? And the folks who operate museums like that uh, would certainly tell you, yes, it is worth it. Well, we've already talked about some of the benefits of maintaining an object statically. Uh, for example, Battleship New Jersey, it costs us $10,000 a day just to sit here. But if we were gonna operate the ship, it would cost over a million dollars a day. So the costs associated are absolutely astronomical. We have issues raising the money to be able to just sit here. There is no way we could get to the point to operate the object. With a vehicle like a tank or an aircraft, it only takes a couple of technical experts to keep it running. Uh, with a vehicle like a large ship, oftentimes it takes more experts and they are difficult to find and their services aren't cheap. They are experts after all. Uh, oftentimes the people who maintain these, these vehicles are volunteers. And it's even more difficult to find an appropriate number of volunteers to operate something the size of a battleship. So really, uh, I tend to think that the ability to operate or not operate an artifact is more a question of scale. We have the personnel to do periodic maintenance on this gun mount. And it does require a lot of maintenance because we let people on it and they, they use the thing. And so the, these handles are constantly breaking and, and wearing out. Uh, the, the chair is constantly being rocked and damaged. Uh, we, we even fire this gun, although that hasn't led to too severe of uh, consumption issues. We don't do it that frequently, uh, but it does require people to work on it. Likewise, operating the ship's boat uh, op requires work on the engine, There's just regular work on the things that are on it, w work on a canvas cover to protect it, has to be taken out of the water and saran wrapped in the winter and then put back in the water in the summer. Uh, it, it requires work from a couple of volunteers pretty consistently. We have the volunteer staff to do that, but we don't have the number that it takes to maintain an entire object like this, even if our Navy contract allows us to. One thing that really sways my point of view on this is how you are going to use the object if you are choosing to restore it and using it consumptively. Uh, if you are uh, choosing to fly a historic aircraft, is it just so that you can fly a historic aircraft? In which case that is a negative consumptive use, or are you taking visitors through that aircraft so they can see it? Are you potentially taking visitors up on that aircraft on flights? And, and many of the uh, still flying warbirds do that. Uh, likewise, with the armored vehicles that you restore, is it so that you and your buddies can go out and drive this around a field every now and again? Uh, that would be a negative consumptive use of the artifact that doesn't benefit anybody. But if you do like the Museum of the American GI does and invite large numbers of visitors out to participate in these uh, reenactment weekends to see the objects driven, to interact with the crews, to be able to ride in them, well then there is a value to the consumptive use of the artifact. On Battleship New Jersey, we did not restore this 40 millimeter gun so that our gun crew can fire it off for fun. We restored it so that every single kid who comes on board the ship can sit where I'm sitting, 
and actuate the controls here and see what it was like to use this. And so that is what I consider uh, to be a major deciding factor. If you're gonna use something consumptively, is it benefiting the general public? What are your opinions on the use of objects like this and whether or not they should be restored? Like, obviously I've heard from thousands of you guys that you would love to see the battleship restored and sailing out there. And for so many different reasons, that's just not possible. Um, if you do know any millionaires who are looking to not be millionaires anymore, do hit me up. Uh, maybe we can talk then. But what do you think about, say, macro artifacts like this gun or a Sherman tank or a B-17 and whether or not they should just be gate guards or uh, still operable craft? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. For today's video, consider donating to support the Museum of the American GI and the restoration efforts they have ongoing with their historic vehicles. They were nice enough to let us film on their property. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our museum. Thanks for watching.